Lawrence, your numbers have been thrown into the spotlight with a st very strong net earnings growth, 49%. But I think I look at it as a tale of two cities. So if you look at this, the net earnings growth, and I looked at the ramp up in provisions, and I'd imagine where would this net earnings be if we didn't have such an acceleration in the provisions? And also, interest expense squeezing your top line quite a bit. How do you look at it within that context of straddling the two sides? Strong momentum, but there are bumps right out. So yeah, uh, and thanks, thanks, Julian. It's always, always a pleasure to, to, to be here. Uh, good performance, uh, as I said when we release the results, um, when you look at the shape of, of our income statement, it's driven by uh, key business fundamentals. So, you know, 22% growth in, in, in total income, uh, driven both by funded and non-funded uh, parts of, of, you know, the revenue streams, shows that we have been able to diversify our revenue, uh, the revenue streams, you know, to start taking out concentration risk on on just the funded uh, side of things. We've also been uh, able to, to manage our costs, you know, 11% year on year growth. So you're getting a pretty good good shape. But to the point you make, yes, um, our NPLs are high, so hence we've got to keep uh, ramping up our, our ECL, uh, you know, uh, provisions on, 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 on those loans. Uh, we are setting the base, just clean up our book, get the right level of uh, provisioning, and we didn't start this year. It's something we've been doing for the last, for the last three years, just to make sure that we have got the appropriate cover uh, on, on our, on our, on our, on our, on our uh, non-performing loans, and that sets us up uh, for really good accelerated future growth. I see. And on the asset quality, Lawrence, because again, I thought there when I was coming through your numbers, again, a tale of two cities. I think the thing about your Q3 numbers, it is not one dimensional. So whereas the quantum has grown, um, I think about 15% or so, I think on a quarter on quarter basis, when I look at the trend line, it looks to me like finally, finally, KCB starting to hit a peak on this, on this headache. <laughs> I hope that's the case, Lawrence. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yes, we, we have really worked, worked hard on, on, on NPLs. The environment hasn't been that conducive to, to, to uh, you know, for the strategies, the recovery strategies that we put across. But yes, the good news is when you look actually starting from uh, the first quarter, uh, the movement in terms of growth uh, on the stock, it's slowed down. And, and we are, you know, we are really, really pushing to make sure that that turns around and we start seeing a good decline. So where's the pressure coming from at this point? Pressure is actually, uh, so within the Kenya businesses, the two banks in, in, in Kenya, uh, we've seen corporate, yeah, NBK and, and, and KCB Kenya. Um, we are seeing um, uh, improvement in the corporate book for KCB Kenya, but we are seeing a deterioration in the corporate book of NBK. Uh, SMEs are really hit, uh, you know, the SME NPL I think is sitting at around 25% uh, and it's been ramping up um, with the, with the um, and, and basically I think it addresses the entire retail. So we, you know, disposable incomes for, for, for uh, you know, individuals and, and uh, have been constrained with the, with, with the fiscal, uh, uh, you know, uh, consolidation plans that the government has put across. Uh, that obviously is impacting the ability to purchase, is impacting the cash flows for SMEs. Um, and, and, you know, the interest rates are also high, uh, yeah. given the, the, the regime in the market that, uh, that we are in. So banks are increasing their borrowing rates as well to match the cost of funds. Lawrence, the flatlining of your loan book at a group level and contraction in Kenya, is it fundamentally a question of uh, revaluation of the FX book or what's playing there? So there's an element of revaluation of the FX book, but there's also a, a, an element of uh, risk appetite. Uh, given where the interest rates are at the moment in, the, in, uh, in, in, in Kenya, we are also being very selective on in terms of how do you grow your loan book. Uh, so you're looking mostly at the better rated, risk rated customers. You're willing to take more risk there uh, and, you know, and start you know, to be cautious about some risk buckets in, in, your, in your book. And also, I thought uh, I saw something like what looked a bit conservative on the deposit side as well. I'd imagine that's a function largely of the pricing. But as we begin to see a repricing cycle, given what you're seeing in the benchmark rate, you will be changing that or how do you posture yourself? Um, so, so two things on deposit. One, in terms of the quantum uh, year-on-year performance, those those are decline. Uh, you know, uh, again, FX for 
especially on the consolidation uh, from from um, you know from our international businesses TMB being the big one because 90 95% of TMB deposits are, are dollar so translating that into the reporting currency year on year there's 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 there's, there's an impact but also we've lost we we've seeded market share on the G2G so when you compare last year and this year, we were 100% G2G bankers. We are about 70% this year. So that, and the volumes have come down with the Uganda volumes leaving as well. So, so that has also impacted um, uh, uh, some part of, of you know, the, the reduction in deposits. The mixing deposit as well, now coming to the cost of, 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 of funds uh, element, we've seen the term and, um, and, uh, and call deposit ratio uh, in our book, grow from 20 odd, 24, 25% to about 32, 33. So, you know, that is the costly part of deposits. So, which has, you know, manifested in the interest expense line, which, of course, now we need to pass that on to the, to the, to the customers. We had a conversation not too far back, Lawrence, and I was telling you about um, uh, on the G2G business, but uh, is KCB overexposed on that side? And you talk about seeding business. Was it finally appreciation of that, or how did you arrive at that? So remember when G2G started, uh, we were, I think all the banks, at least 10 banks were on the table. Uh, uh, KCB decided this makes sense. Um, we are willing to take their, this risk. The other banks did not show up. Uh, I suppose they didn't want to be the guinea pigs. So, <laughs> so one year in, uh, they realized, oh, this, this, this thing actually does make sense. So, you know, they came back and started saying, no, 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 you know, we need to, to be part of this. So uh, I think we were just gracious enough to say, that's fine. Uh, we, we are happy, you know, for, for, for other banks to, to take part in it. You mentioned TMB, numbers looking pretty good, I think. And I saw a mention that uh, you are migrating now to T20 Point and the core banking. Maybe give us some color around that. Yeah, so when, when we were doing the transaction uh, to acquire TMB back in 2000 and 2022, uh, they were in the process of changing their core banking system. Um, so we did ask them, why don't we wait, wait for us to finish the transaction so that the decision you make is aligned to the, to the rest of the group? Uh, and, you know, they, they, they did that. So we started the migration uh, early this year uh, to uh, T24. Uh, we are uh, expecting to go live first quarter of, of next year. Uh, they will be on the on the latest version of uh, T24. Okay. And uh, in terms of the efficiencies, then this enables you to extract from the business. I'm sure many of us will be keen on that as well. Absolutely, absolutely. So I mean, with with a unified core banking system, we are able to uh, to to now start executing on the synergies that uh, we are, we had identified. We are able to start bringing also products uh, and and roll out products that you know the group has in in, in DRC a lot easier, a lot faster, and a lot more efficiently. So we, you know uh, we 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 really do think from 2025 we'll start seeing a, a really really good um, uh, up, uptake in terms of performance. They've already done very well. Uh, don't get me wrong. Yeah. TMB has done has had a fantastic two years since we bought them, but we believe there's a lot more potential in there. NBK. First of all, I'm sure everyone is wondering how far we with the acquisition, rather the exit uh, of the business to Access Bank. What's the latest? So we've gotten uh, quite a number of regulatory approvals, uh, Comesa, uh, Competition Authority, uh, Competition Authority of Kenya uh, also got, uh, got involved and they've given, they've given a conditional uh, approval. CBN, um, the Central Bank of Nigeria, I've given a conditional uh, no objection. We are waiting for the Central Bank of Kenya uh, to give to give us, um, uh, you know, the go ahead. Uh, we've been in t talking uh, with them. Uh, I can tell you the the length of of the letters has gradu has gradually shortened. The first one was I think three pages, and you know we've we've been answering all the questions they've raised. So we are hopeful that we should get. Um, no objection or you know a, a way forward uh, shortly given where we are in the year uh, end of november um it, if if we got the no objection at in in the next two three weeks it would only make sense to wait until 31st december so that you do your full year audit get your financials based on you know the uh, 31st december and then you know you use that for the valuation and what 
would get paid. So we are looking at uh, quarter one, given where we are right now. So we are looking at uh, to close this within the first quarter of next year. And the NBK numbers, to be fair, don't look too bad. Uh, I mean, Q3 performance are uh, quite, quite compelling there. So you're looking at Q1 for NBK, and I'm sure many of us are looking forward to what that would mean for your NPLs especially. What sort of a brief are you expecting from there, Lauren? So uh, the uh, Q3 NBK's uh, NPL was sitting at about 33, 34%. Um, they had a very big increase in, in, in their NPL stock quarter on quarter, uh, close to eight, nine, eight, nine billion uh, increase. So when we, we uh, consolidate our target next year, including NBK, because remember we are making a, a, a plans for 2025 as though NBK is still our, will be our subsidiary because right now they, they are our subsidiary. We are looking at overall NPL target of about 15% for next year. That's inclusive of, 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 um, of, um, of NBK. I would say if we're knocking out N, uh, NBK, it should be give us something close to about 300 basis points improvement. Yeah, so, so around 12, 12, 13 uh, next year. Well, in the last conversation we had, we had some uh, tough discussion around the Rwanda business and what was showing up in the numbers. How is it uh, performing right now? Yeah, so Rwanda had a hit in, in June, uh, as you, you rightfully pick, picked, 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 picked on uh, as we announced the half year results. Um, since then, you know, they've gone back to, to delivering their, what we expect them to deliver on a monthly basis. Uh, so that one off knock obviously will, will sit in their financials for the, for, for the entire year. Um, we think there's a lot of potential, to be honest, uh, in, in Rwanda. Uh, we, we've finished the phase one of branch rationalization. Uh, which you know we expect to get to get some some synergies and benefits out of there. Um, we've stabilized the channels, uh, which were very you know uh, quite erratic. The, the agency banking, ATMs, mobile, you know, just just getting serving our customers through uh, you know channels other than uh, going to the branch was a bit shaky at the first half of the year. That seems to be now you know uh, behind us, and you know we've we've sorted um, we've stabilized that. With that, I expect then we should be able to start generating uh, quite a bit uh, of fees uh, and you know, just being able to, to balance our funded and non-funded uh, income. We've revamped our treasury office. Um, you know, we, we've got a new treasurer. Um, you know, we've got uh, more people uh, in, in, the treasury, in the treasury team. We, the treasury team is also working a lot better with the corporate and, and, um, and the retail guys for sales. So we also are pushing to ensure that we are growing our, our FX income in, um, in, 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 uh, in Rwanda. When you compare us um, uh, with, with competition, you notice that, you know, we sort of lag a bit behind on non-funded. We lag way behind on costs. So, you know, we've, I keep telling them we seem to have a big belly in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in Rwanda. So I would want to trim that belly and get a six pack. And then all that comes down into profits because that's how you're going to grow your, 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 your earnings. Yeah. So that's, that's a strategy. One of the developments which uh, we have seen and I think you've also seen is uh, the draft guidelines, especially on the liquidity coverage ratio by the, by the market regulator. And what stood out for me, Lawrence, and I did share this with you, is around um, requirements on disclosures around foreign currency. And it looks like there's a zero in on that sort of exposure within the banking sector. Broadly speaking, what do you expect from this? Uh, because there have been many takeouts out here. And what would that mean for the sector at large? Uh, we, need, we need to really uh, get into the detail of, 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 of those guidelines, to be honest. I haven't quite sat down with, with the team to, 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 to review them. But you can see the direction of travel. It's, it's essentially trying to be very cautious about the exposure banks would have on, on FX, the exposure that puts the general economy uh, under, um, and, and just getting, being able for the regulator to get all the information they need uh, to be able to plan, uh, forecast, and see any headwinds uh, coming their way. So I, I, generally, that's, that's the way I see the direction of travel on, on that particular one. I think it's the, the, the others is really getting full implementation of Basel III. You know, we, we've talked about being Basel III compliant for quite a while. I mean, we, we I think even before the, the previous governor, if, if I'm not wrong, 
but hadn't gone fully, hadn't done the full implementation of that. So, you know, uh, LCR, NSFR, uh, those are those are ratios that you know are part and parcel of Basel three that we need to report. We sort of only just report on the normal liquidity ratio that the regulator uh, asks us to. There have been so many rumors in the in the social media around uh, bank stability, liquidity position. Are we cutting withdrawals over the counter or not? And you've already mentioned the issues around the LCR, but I'd just like to get it from your perspective. Um, how are we placed, uh, especially as KCB, when it comes to liquidity? We, we are sitting well. I mean, the numbers we just, uh, we just published, our liquidity was 42%. Yeah. So yes, and I've seen those, those uh, social media chats. Um, the regulator did come out a week or two weeks ago, uh, you know, to to um, you know, give their views about the fi fi financial industry. It's stable. There's no capping. Ourselves, we are not capping. So th there could be some misunderstandings. I know that in some branches we do cap the deposit, the amount of deposit. We'll take the deposit of a certain level for the first time, but they, after that we'll ask you to go use our other channels. That's just a strategy to decongest. Uh, uh, you know our, our banking halls. We don't cap withdrawals. Um, you know, as the CEO, our GCO, the other day gave an example. If you uh, feel limited in terms, you think there's a cap in, just go to your mobile, move money from uh, your bank. Uh, I think our limit is over a hundred thousand a day wallet. to your mobile wallet, and you, it will work. I mean, that's just a very good way of testing. Yeah, and you'll see if that works, then you know there's no limit. Yeah, our liquidity is is, uh, is, is, is quite strong. Uh, I don't know where the rumors are coming from, but I think the banking industry is, 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 is solid. As we close the conversation, Lawrence, um, for those of us who track your numbers, by Q3, you're already way above uh, your performance in the F23. It looks like full year 24 will not be bad at all. We should be looking forward to this. <laughs> Trust you to have done the calculation. <laughs> Yes, yes. By Q3, we, we are above last year's full year performance. Um, we did have a very bad year last year. Um, the, we were, as we said before, the, 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 the depreciation of the shilling really hit, um, uh, you know, our, our provisions, uh, hit, hit, hit our P&L. Uh, this year with the stabilization, we, yes, there's a bit of an impact on consolidation, but by and large we are seeing the fundamental part of the business, the key fundamental drivers really delivering. So, yes, uh, barring any Black Swan event in the next uh, <laughs> six weeks, uh, we, should, we should have a good year.